stance. I think I think you come from two different places, and the one place that that these guys are coming from is Sash, and you know, and I watched the hangout they had on this and they talked about it and there was nobody on that hangout that disagreed with uh, Sasha on this that I could tell. I think Rob was uh, was on there as well. And it comes from, from the standpoint of uh, Google's protecting their visitor and however they have to do that, by God, they're going to do it. And if it means that you attach a, a a penalty in, in even if it's a permanent penalty on uh, something like a domain name, then that's what they have to do. That's what they have to do to protect themselves. I say that Google's a big enough boy on the block now. I mean, they've proven themselves. Um, they have enough of talent there that they can also chew gum and walk at the same time. Do they, in, in other words, just because they can penalize a domain doesn't mean they should forever. And Google's Google can put some effort into this and give away for somebody who happens to have a domain that has been penalized a, a way to get out of it. And I think it's an endless circle of if you if you haven't gotten a manual penalty then you have a really hard time. You you, can't, you don't have the option of sending in a, a, a request for reconsideration. If it's an algorithm, algorithm penalty, you're kind of stuck. And even Matt Cutts himself has said, some domain names you might just have to trash. And I think that's wrong because if somebody trashes the domain name, I mean, common sense is going to tell you this. We're, if you own a car that's damaged, it, the, the, the motor's no good, you say, call the junkyard and get it out of my backyard. Okay, well, if the junkyard turns around and sells that car, the junkyard has no idea that the car is, the motor's blown. They just come, they pick it up, they take it to their junkyard. Somebody comes along and says, do you want to sell that car? And they say, sure. Um, the, the buyer is the one that ends up with a junk car. And... I don't think that, and there's no recourse on that. And it, unfortunately, um, there for the buyer, you, you don't have any way out. Now, there's laws in the United States that says, you know, if you buy a car, you're supposed to reveal certain things about the car. There's a lemon law. There's there's things to protect the buyer. In this case, domains, there's no way to get this domain fixed if you buy it. You could very easily, it, it, and I think this is where the difference, uh, part of the difference is, is, is these guys, um, and, and I don't want to say these guys in a negative way, but the, the group of TCs that are that were talking about this are saying the main buyers, big guys that are in that business. I kind of look at it like from another perspective, most, most people are not domain buyers. Most people are not SEO experts. They have no clue. You've got somebody who is... And, and I'm not even convinced, I don't see any statistics where most people who are buying domains are buying them for a business. So from from my perspective, um, if you're going to hurt somebody who is innocent and you don't give them a way out, that's wrong. At a fundamental level, at just basic human decency, we wouldn't do it to people that we know, we wouldn't do it to people that we don't know. And if you judge it from the real world, and I think the, the web has become the real world. People are using their websites in many different ways. And, and I think that if you just look at it from the perspective of common sense, I have a product that I had no idea that I bought that was damaged. I have no way to get it fixed. I've spent all this money, and, and Google's not giving me a way out. That fundamentally to me, is just flat out wrong and bad customer service. And if I, if I, I've had that kind of customer service before. I've gone to restaurants, I've ordered food, they haven't prepared it properly, and they've said to me, that's just tough. You either eat it and like it or you don't eat here anymore. And I chose not to eat there anymore. And that's kind of the same thing here is, is Google's not giving, giving the, 
they're not looking at somebody who owns a website as a customer almost so if if you don't look at somebody who is who owns a website who has bought a domain who's trying to rank who's trying to put out good content if you're looking at that person as opposite of a customer opposite of what you're the way you look at it as a visitor of of your website I think that's I think that's where they have a disconnect and I and I think it is a disconnect I'd say they've run the numbers on this and I reckon that they figured out that the benefits of allowing people to clean their domain are far lower than the costs of spammers being able to do the same I agree a hundred percent with what, what Rob is saying there I really do I like I mean I, I, I this one grinds my gears uh, but I'm just sure that they've looked at this and said this is an edge case and it's going to affect such a small number of people uh, that we're not it's not going to justify us doing anything about it now I don't agree with that I uh, you know I think it's it's rotten to the core and I think that it's a problem that's only going to grow over time because a lot of people don't seem to realize that these are domains that are going to come back into the pool over time uh, they didn't get expired the day they got hit by penguin they're going to expire as their natural expiry date comes along whether it's a year or two years or three years and then you're going to have the really big guys are going to come along and they're going to suck up all the drops and I know, like I mentioned online, that two of the biggest online domain brokers, they hoover up about 60,000 domains from the drop every month. And those domains go straight into their systems and straight for sale within two days of them picking them up. And they're selling those domains for, let's say, $1,000 to $2,000 on average. And they don't need to do too many sales, and they can sit in those domains for years. So this problem is going to linger because Penguin is not something that they 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 have not said Penguin is something that wears off in time. So this is going to be a problem down the road. They're just storing problems for themselves. It's, it's, there's no time out on an algorithm penalty, from my understanding. The the biggest problem I have. Sorry, Rob. I was going to say the biggest problem I have with this is that at no point has any Googler said if you get one of these domains, go in and disavow all the links. And that this is surely a perfect case for the disavow tool. And I don't understand why they are not. They're, they're they're saying every time they said the same thing, you're going to have to clean it up. They've never said go and disavow everything. And it's a perfect case for disavow, but again, this comes back to the disavow, and we won't start Jim on disavow. I, 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 I think the disavow tool is a great idea. I think they should build one. I, hang on a second. I just want to get this. I think you're right. They should build one. I think what the problem is 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 Matt Cutts even had said when Penguin first came out, he said there are some domains that you're just going to have to leave. That just forget. No matter what you do. You, they're not going to work, and I, I with some, with a lot of people's feedback, it's it's anecdotal. There's no hard evidence that I've seen. Some people are just saying that the, this eval tool just isn't working. Jim, I think you're one of them. So I think b bottom line is is you don't have any recourse to fix the domain. That's my point. Is they go back into the pool, an innocent an innocent person not knowing any better, purchases that domain name and they have and they invest in a way they, they might think it's brand new mm. it goes back into the pool they may buy that name you know a domainer may not pick it up they may buy it straight from somebody so is a brand new brand new domain and they say okay I have a brand new straight up domain and then they go on to build a say a ten or fifteen thousand dollar website or in some say it's five hundred dollar website they go on for six Six months or a year and they can't rank for anything and they don't know why how are you supposed to even know that that domain is damaged at that point so you're number one Google saying we're not going to give you a way to fix it number two we're not even going to tell you it's broke yeah and number so, two that number two I mean it's it's annoying as well because a lot very few people know this but there is actually a tool an API that you can ping a domain to and it will tell you whether that domain is banned from Google AdSense okay now not many people know about it 
But basically, you can go and you can, and the reason why domainers use it is that they use it because if they're buying domains to park, they want to know if it's going to be banned from the tier one advertisers. And the tier one advertisers are Google. So this tool basically comes back with true or false, which says whether the domain is allowed on the AdSense network. Uh, because all the parking companies, they all just use an ad set speed. Uh, why don't Google, why don't the organic side offer the same tool for uh, for Penguin? Because it defeats the purpose of what Google's trying to do. Google want to punish the crappy SEOs. They denied it, they said it at the start, but people clearly label Penguin as the anti-SEO algo. And they were right. You know, Google have left it. They could have handled it any number of ways, but they have intentionally left Penguin to leave people to rot. If they think you have participated in a certain form of link manipulation, you are going to suffer for it. Whether you built them, whether somebody built them on your behalf, whether somebody spammed you with them, for all we know, we don't know how fine the line Google's got on. This. All we know is, is I don't think anyone's actually recovered from Penguin. Has Google confirmed the Penguin recovery yet? Because I think I've seen two cases now where people have said a link recovery, they fired off manual requests. That means it can't have been Penguin. Because Penguin's algo based and it will only be fixed by the algo. I think there's been a few. But what are they, I think they came with the two iterations that they released subsequently to the, the, the initial Penguin. And I'd say my view is that the two iterations they released were actually bug fixes to fix yeah. some edge cases. And, I mean, I don't know why they haven't rerun it. I mean, they obviously they have a reason. They have a reason for everything. Uh, um, but all I know is that the longer they leave it, the bigger the communications problem they have is. Uh, because their communications, they have a problem with it. And I'm sure they're discussing it internally. I'm, I'm absolutely well. I'm absolutely sure they're discussing it internally, uh, like some of these problems they're having. Whether it's you know certain people who are very high up in the web spam team saying that this tool doesn't work, and then others having to come in and say this tool does work. And you can tell. I mean, even John Miller said it the last week that you know they're working on stuff, and I think they're trying to get stuff out, but we're just it's still seeing nothing. So, well, I think it's a conflict of interests. Because the same tool can be used different ways and for different results. And what Google are after is cleaner SERPs. That this isn't a quality algo like, uh, like Panda was. That this is a link manipulation. This is an over-optimization one. Um, they wanted spam gone. Good, finally. You know, it's only taken them, what, five plus years? I remember going into the forum weekly at the start, bitching at John Mueller about some of the link networks out there, and they did nothing. I've complained to people like Pedro, nothing. They try to say, oh no, you know, we, we do our job like hell. It's taken an algo to go out and clean up a fair part of the net, because Google manually could not do it. Yeah, well, manual doesn't scale. For what they were dealing no. with, in fairness, like it was never going to scale. But. The, the, I don't think the problem is Penguin. I think Penguin did a very good job. I think internally, uh, from the point of view of cleaning up the service, they did a great job. Uh, it caught the right sites. Exactly. 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 Yeah. And this is nearly always Google's problem. They get to a point where they have got a systematic approach, then it comes down to the crunch, and they run around and flap their bloody hands. Places, maps, business listings, local. They keep having the same technical faults. I think they, they just live in a different world. I don't mean that in a bad way, but literally they, they live in a very different uh, bubble to they the rest of everyone. What it is like for normal people with a normal site and a normal business that's somewhat dependent on the site to be crippled. Hell, most of them can't even build a website, let alone optimize one. They had that joker who turned around and said, oh, all SEO is spam. It's like, you haven't got a clue. Yet it's being decided for us by people that do not know, that do not understand. Is it any wonder that we're hitting problems? You yeah. know, they're just unrealistic. I think there's two parts to this, though, right? They've got Google put you over, um, for all practical purposes, the biggest link graph in the world. 
um, we, we're not aware, obviously, of the length of research that they would go into before making a suggestion like this or not providing a tool. For instance, they may know, um, because they've got the link graph, um, that 0.0001% of domains would be affected by this issue, which is a tiny percentage of domains, right? Um, so they might look at that and go, well, it might not be worth us providing a tool for it. The bigger issue here, though, is the fact that, just in general, I think that if you're going to go in and buy a domain for $1,000 or $10,000 or whatever it might be, um, I think I said this somewhere during the week, it would be just like buying a car or a house. You've got to go and do due diligence on it. Oh, no, that's fine. Here's the, but here's the issue. I, I, Most people don't know that, that there is due diligence to be had on a domain, right? So for someone that works in search, um, you know that you can do due diligence on a wait, domain. Wait, wait, wait. You know Hang on a second. I just have a question. If I go to a restaurant and I want to buy a meal, do I go back and inspect the kitchen? They won't even allow me in the kitchen. Do I go and inspect the fish to make sure it was caught that day? You can use, you know, you can use the house domain. You can use the car domain. We're talking about an eight or ten dollar purchase. On, but it might on, be. It could be. It might not be. Yeah, if you're buying, you know, I think we're. I think that's where the disconnect is. Is is first of all you. You're under the impression when you go to a restaurant or you go to a hotel that the, if you go spend a, a weekend at a hotel that they're, they're up to code. That that hotel is is done what they're supposed to do. They've been inspected. That it's safe. The fire escapes are there. The, the proper fire extinguishers are placed in the proper locations. You assume that because the somebody else has come in and inspected the hotel. When when you go buy a domain on the open market, let's say you go to GoDaddy and you're going to purchase a domain. You do a search and you're going to purchase the domain. I think at that point, uh, a buyer is assuming I'm buying this from GoDaddy. So somebody, it's brand new. I'm not looking to purchase a domain that's been around for a while or I don't know if it's been around for a while. I think at that point, there's some assumption that when you purchase a domain that you're not going to get hurt by that domain. Just like if I go spend the weekend at a hotel, that I'm not going to get hurt because the fire extinguishers don't work. So I think you're talking about two different things. If you're buying a, a $10,000 domain on the secondary market and you don't do your research on it and you don't do your due diligence on it and the domain is no good and you just spent ten grand and you paid somebody for that, well, then, then I would say you fall into the idiot category, right? You you spent ten grand and you didn't you didn't do any research. And this is what I'm saying. I, I completely understand that, right? So if you're buying something that's worth a substantial amount of money, people expect like a car, a house, anything major, the people will do due diligence. There's consumer laws that protect uh, different sorts of purchases in different markets around the world, um, but not every market's regulated. You know, so you go and buy stuff in a finance industry; it's heavily regulated. You go and buy something like a, a coffee from your local cafe, well, it's not regulated. It's a completely different type of thing, right? The issue here, though, is the fact that the vast portion of domains are not, that are being purchased, are not going to be, um, uh, you know, keyword domains that are short, catchy, things that are worth $10,000. They'll be the ones that are worth $8, $10, $20, right? And that's the last, the, the vast portion of the domains that are being purchased. The next problem is, is that the people that are buying the vast portion of these domains have no bloody clue. And it's not their job to have a clue. It's their job that they want to set up a website for their daughter or a friend or their local cafe and they just want to have a website because they think that they need one. They've done nothing wrong. Um, and then they go and buy a domain that they don't necessarily know has been used before, and um, they're behind the eight ball before they've even started. I would say here, this is a good opportunity for someone like um, GoDaddy, as an example, um, to be a front runner, be a market leader, and do something proactive about it. For instance, um, this would lose them some sales, 
but it would gain them a lot of credibility. They could come up when you go to register a domain. They could subscribe to the link graphs from Ahrefs, SEO Moz, Majestic, etc. Um, and you go to purchase the domain, and it comes up and goes, FYI, this domain has already been registered. This is the link graph for this. Doesn't look great. You can check what was on this website on archive.org. Here's 15 links across the last four years of snapshots that archive.org took. Um, we would recommend that you don't purchase this domain. Pick a different one. That's if you are going to yeah, yeah, but that's not going to work. No, no, no. Go in with your eyes open. Like I said, this might cost someone like GoDaddy um, a sale on a domain, right? That it was going to cost them ten bucks or twenty bucks to buy. On the flip side, this could earn them tremendous credibility, because, for instance, th there's a great presentation from. Um, the, go, the CEO, I think it was the CEO of GoDaddy or the COO, and he talked about the onboarding process of customers to GoDaddy and where they make their money, right? And it's not making money out of domains. It's making money out of all of the other services that customers um, progressively use from GoDaddy over the course of three years, five years, seven years, and they, and they end up making thousands and thousands of dollars out of clients, not because because they're gouging them just because they continue to use their services and upgrade them, right? This could be the perfect marketing tactic for someone like GoDaddy to come up and say, we're going to offer a, um, a great service. We're looking after our customers and it will provide even more brand loyalty to their clients to know that, you know what? They just helped me not make a bad decision. I had no idea I was about to walk into a minefield because an average person has got no idea, none. They don't know what Webmaster Tools is. They don't know what a link graph is. They don't even know how to spell it. They just want a domain. They just want a website. That's all they want. And, and I think that's the point we're trying to make. Is no, you know, but, you know but it's, uh, it's also not Google's job to um, provide these sorts of tools necessarily. Oh, well, wait a second. I, I disagree with that because if they're if they're if they're putting a penalty on a domain name. And you're saying, you're saying that you know there's no way to there's no really way to tell if you give somebody a link graph, uh, or if you if you create your own tool. I can create a tool that'll judge whether a domain could or could not have a penalty, may or may not have a penalty. But there's no way for me to tell. So from from that aspect, you know, Google that's that's part of the the endless circle of. Uh, not being able to get out of. I, I don't know if my domain is penalized or not. There's no way to make sure. You can give me your opinion, but I don't know for sure. I mean, you start, and, and then I, if I, if it's a, if it's a, uh, an algorithm penalty, I have no way to reconsider that domain and get back into um, the good graces of Google. I think this is a problem that Google's created, and I think Google could do a little bit. Not it's not Google's problem to fix it, and I think that's the difference. I think that's the fundamental um, difference in opinion here, and we can all agree to disagree on this. I don't want to cause you know it's not like I want to cause an enemy over this, but if if you you know if if you feel that it's not Google's problem to provide any information or fix it, then then you you know. Who cares? And it's such a, and I think it also goes to, it's an outlier situation. It's not something that, you know, they've looked at the numbers on it, like Richard said, and it's not something that they feel is is a, a big deal, that there's not going to be that many people who are hurt. And then you come from another side, right? And the, and the opposite end of that is, just look, you know, you can create a tool, create a disavow tool to disavow all the links, clean up all everything, and start from scratch. Boom. You know, it's that simple. But Google doesn't want to do that. Yeah, I don't understand why you're not allowed to reset your domain and start from scratch as if it's a new domain. I just don't see any downsides that even if I'm if I've been a spammer in the past, right. they'll pick me up very soon after if I start to spam again. So you know I, I won't take them long. You, you can do that. You might not like how you've got to do it to do it, but you can do it. Drop your domain and send a 404 for every request. Yeah, but that actually won't. That's not fixing. If 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 the domain has got a penguin penalty, 
It's not going to fix it. It's not going to fix it by sending 404. Because the minute you come back online, you still got that penalty. Those links still linger. So even 404ing, the minute you put something up, you see, the thing is, you can 404 any D page you want, but you cannot 404 your home page. So you're always going to be screwed trying to 404 away. I suppose. Sorry? Depends what's been spammed, I suppose. It does. I mean, there's different shades of gray. Of course there is. Um, and, you know, we're, we're talking in absolutes when, when there are really no absolutes. But, you know, I, I think that Google has to bear some responsibility for this. If they're the ones that are putting the penalties in these domains, I think they at least have to help people to discern whether the domain that they're about to choose may have problems six months, 12 months down the road when it won't rank for anything. I agree, and I said this during the week. I, like, I think um, Google have done integrations between their backend services and web hosts in the past. Uh, I can't remember what it's for, but it might be for something like it's for Webmaster Web Web Tools. Is one of the things they've integrated. Okay. So I, I was sure that they'd done. I just couldn't remember what it was exactly. So they've gone to the hosting industry and said, um, we can, "We're going to provide you tools to ultimately help your clients." That's great, fantastic, excellent. There'd be nothing stopping them coming up and putting out an API that simply provided a risk assessment, yes or no. Or if it wasn't a yes or no, it could be a risk between one and ten. Something, something. So that the domain industry could come up and tell the clients, this, is, this domain is risk averse. You probably shouldn't buy it. Um, alternatively, if they're not going to do that, then they need to provide a mechanism, or they should, whether they will is a whole other kettle of fish, they should provide a way for you to reset. You know, like for instance, if you change your hosting and you move your hosting to the other side of the world, if you change your domain registrar, if the registrant data changes completely, if the content on the website changes completely, if the link profile or, or the URLs on your website change completely, if you submit a reconsideration request, you should be able to do all of these things. And, and Matt said as much in his video about this, but he said the issue for them is, is that spammers are deceptive. How are they to know that you haven't done that simply to get a reset or to get out of the penalty box? Yeah. And I that's, can appreciate that. Why should normal people have to suffer because of a handful of spammers? Well, that's Google always been the case. But to judge it properly, Google are not able to back it properly. Google should not be taking that action. And I'll tell you the other thing about, I mean, it's a great idea to offer an API that I can say, uh, you know, is my domain marked? But well, one of the big problems is that, sadly, the domaining industry is actually one of the filthiest industries you'll ever come across. <laughs> Absolutely filthy, yeah. And there will be people who, who will abuse that for sheer profit because there's no greedier industry than the domain industry. Uh, what I, I, I think actually what would, I think not even giving me the information before I buy the domain, I'd be happy if they had a way, if they actually told me in Webmaster Tools after I buy and verify a domain, if they were just able to say to me, you know, this domain is dirty, so that I don't go putting a year or 18 months into building a business on a domain and doing all, all the branding and all the rest of it and then finding out down the road that this domain is never going to work. I think that that would be something they could do because at least then it's not something that I can ping to find all these bad domains initially. It's after I bought it. But the problem is they don't notify you of anything that's Penguin related. And there's so many problems now coming up with Penguin, and I'm sure some of them they just didn't think of. But some of them they just made the decision at some point we're just going to go with. And it's going to come home to roost. It ought to come home to roost, but it won't. Google don't care. At the end of the day, it's not their problem. They may create it, but it doesn't adversely affect them. The vast majority of people will not comprehend it's Google's fault. They'll blame the main sellers. No, I, no. I don't even think that people will blame the domain. I think that people will in time. It's just like, okay, there were very few cases, but there were some cases years ago before Penguin of guys picking up domains and coming to, a, to the webmaster forums and saying, yes. you know, what's wrong with our domain? And I remember one case where John Muller went, went to the guy and said, look, you know, your domain had a previous life and it was really, really spammed. I think it was worked on, it was worked in the adult industry. And I know that that 
domain was reset. Because back then, they used to say, look, if you think there's something there, you can submit a reconsideration request, and we'll look at it. But of course, now you can't because they're filtered. Well, around the same time, there was another one that came in. And if you remember, he had to go off and talk to an engineer and came back, and there was nothing they could do. Yeah, I, I don't remember that one specifically, but I, I know there were a few of them. But, but nowadays, yeah. I guarantee that there's going to be more and more of these over time. As I said, nothing is going to happen today. It takes time for these domains to drop and to get picked up again and then to be used. And like, no one's going to come in a week after they set up their new site to say, why isn't my site ranking? People, that, that people are, you know what's going to happen? People in the forums are going to go, oh, you've got to wait. Yeah. And wait. And wait. This is what Google have said from both Panda and Penguin, is you've got to wait. Google seem to want you to sit there and suffer. At least with Panda, you may get a chance of recovery now. You may have to wait several months for it, but it can happen. Penguin doesn't seem to be the case. Yeah, no, I, I think Penguin has failed. I think that that might be part of the reason why they're not rolling it out. I'm sure that they're talking about working on Penguin too. But I think Penguin 2 is going to be a completely different beast. It, yes. may, it may focus on some of the same stuff, but I think Penguin has been, I, I, in my opinion, it's been a failure for them. I think it, it no, did some things very well, and I think in other areas, it's just created an absolute minefield for them. I, I agree. I think that it's, 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 a, it's a big issue, and I think they're right now trying to figure out a way to Penguin 2, 2.0 or whatever, to yeah. fix that issue that they had when they rolled out Penguin, well, I don't, I don't know. Well, so they've got to replace it. They got to replace it with something. Yeah. Well, they can't be seen to roll Penguin back. Oh, and go, no, they, no, they won't roll it back. If you are caught no. in number one, you're caught. That's the end of it. They're yeah. not going to say, "Oh, They're sorry, we made a mistake." That doesn't happen. No. 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 Google and the word "sorry" don't mix. And in it's, fairness, it's in fairness, right. though. I haven't seen, and I've looked at a lot of sites, like a lot of sites now that have been hit by Penguin, and a lot of them in detail. And in fairness, you know, in the when Penguin released first, I saw a couple of false positives, and I remember I reported them back. But I haven't seen any site that I don't think deserved or didn't deserve to get hit by Penguin. No, I'd agree with that. They do seem to be on the money with the targeting. Yeah, Probably. but it's what, how they've handled it all afterwards. You know, I'm still, I honestly believe it is absolutely spastastic to build an algorithm that you cannot manually intervene on. Have they not seen Terminator and where this goes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, the other thing is, that, and, but they also, you can find that there's going to be, it's so complex that they don't actually understand some parts of it themselves. No, they don't. It, it probably takes they, multiple people to understand what's going on in some in some of the parts. But I, I can understand, like you know, they're they're clever, but it's so complex that they, they won't know they, what's going on. They don't seem to have a dashboard. I personally would have had some sort of resource board where I can look and at a glance get all the information I need. They don't have right. it. They have Are to go off and look at different things. Are you kidding me? I, I mean, that's a basic fundamental thing. I mean, I picture somebody sitting in front of a computer with a dashboard that controls some of these. Uh, no, that's I, not, I think, that's that, I think no, I, I, I think Auto is a little bit wide of the mark there. I'd say they have some fantastic reporting in there. I'd say there are just some cases when, edge cases when they won't really know by looking at the data in front of them what's going on. And that's no, normal when you have anything as complex as Google. Well, I agree with that. I, I think that I think they probably you know, it is probably you can see complex. when you sit with Googlers, you can see when they're looking like they have all sorts of funky stuff going on. And it's only when you sit with them, you see what's going on in their browsers and the rest. You see all the added little bits and pieces they have going on, showing them, for instance, what tests are running, what tests they're part of. I'm sure they have excellent reporting, but there's always going to be some cases where something is again on the edge and they can't really discern what's causing it. So. You know, well, I that, think that can happen with anything. Exactly. So if they've got the reporting facilities, why aren't they flagging? Why can't they just send out a quick missive to people? Oh no, they they made a conscious decision that they didn't want to send out those. They can send out decisions. Everyone they set, they hit with a manual penalty. 
and they can send out a report to. So there's no reason they, they if they wanted to, they could send out a report to everyone hit by Penguin, but they don't the want to. The that concerns me is things like Mayday, Panda, Penguin, all these wonderful little scripted issue solvers that they seem to love and adore, they don't tell you about. <laughs> yeah, but and that's... That, that, I mean, I, I know, and in fairness, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not playing devil's advocate here, but in fairness, they can't tell people because all the people in this hangout are probably good guys, but there's a lot of very bad guys out there who really want to do really, really bad stuff. Like the spam, when we talk about spam and what we see, we're not, like, it's not spam. We're just talking about a little, little grey hat stuff. The yeah. real spam is, is bad, 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 and they're fighting some really nefarious people. So I can sort of understand why they have to be very, very careful and cautious about what they put out. But they can have a spam index that they've got a sort of rating system where they can look at a site and turn around and say, you, you, you're in the 20% spam margin, you, you know, you, you're okay. You're on the 40% spam margin, I think you're pushing intentional. Yeah, there's no reason why they don't put that in. I mean, I, I agree with you, I think they should, they do it in AdWords. Yeah. And they can do it if the site is trusted, they can damn well send you a hint. You know, you've been hit by Panda because you've got some pages that look like cookie cutters, like this one and this one. Mm. Job done. I know at least 15 sites that could have benefited from that. Instead, they went and chopped 50% of their pages because 40 of their pages were crap out of 500. They lost half their site. They don't really care. The people they've taken out, there's a hundred other people to fill their spots, so they don't really care. Yeah. Unless you're a brand, they don't give a fiddlers, because they know that there's a hundred, a thousand other guys who are trying to rank for the same. Yeah. The people don't realize that Google doesn't give us stuff. At the end of the day, there's always someone else to replace you. Whether they're as good or better or worse, Google doesn't care. If you're gone, tough. There's a lot no of it's sympathy. worse. A lot of it's worse. I think a lot of it. But it's there. You won't be. Google can't seem to accept this from anybody else's perspective. No, but again, we're, we can't really say what they see because, you know, we're looking from the outside in. And they have a view of an immense internet. And we don't even know half the stuff that's going on that they're dealing with. So it's difficult for us to, to say what they're thinking or what they do or why they do it. Like, well, They're clever people. I know they handle a lot of the automated stuff really well. We don't see the nonsense content anymore. We haven't seen that for years. You don't see too much of the spun content. Mm. There's still spinners out there. They don't seem to realise Google's approach to it, though it appears in three patents. Um, you know, <laughs> Google are really good at spotting automated stuff. It may take them a bit of time to catch some of it. It may take six weeks because they've got to monitor it. They've got to see the content. They've got to associate it with previous patterns. But it doesn't last long. It's when you come to the real coming. Then they start screwing up. And when it comes to manual, you know, nothing seems to screw Google over like a really good, clever SEO. The problem is, is they've let it ride too long. If they take an action four or five years ago, the internet would be a very different place to what it is now. And they would have had a lot less backlash. Yeah. It's also introduced opportunity, though. I mean, it's not all negative. I mean, for all these sites, like, I mean, I've had to work in the last while, I've worked with two insurance companies. And uh, the insurance companies were really badly hit, especially in Ireland, because they were sort of, they just... They weren't web companies. They didn't know what they were doing. And they just hired third-party agencies. And a lot of them hired cheap agencies. But it also opens opportunity for people. I really wish, though, that a year ago, and it's nearly a year to the day they rolled out Panda, that a year ago that maybe if John Mueller hadn't have said, you know, you can fix all this, you can work on it. I wonder, does he regret saying this now a year later when actually that wasn't really the case? And <laughs> should they have been more honest with people and said to people, actually, you know, there's a lot of you that would be far better off starting new and using your resources to build a good site and after six months you'd be making money and like rather than after a year still hoping that you're going to get some sort of recovery 
like they they really it's 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 the communications and the messaging that they've really really screwed up on this. I think. I don't think they planned for it to be this hefty, this harsh, or go on for this long, did they? They expected it to be a rapid iteration, and it wasn't. So it's not like they lied. They were misinformed. They've gone out and said what they were told to say, and now they look just a little bit wrong. I do feel sorry for him on that case, because yeah, if anyone's ever dealt with John Newley, they'll know. He's honest. He's quite honest. Oh, lovely. no, he, uh, he, he's dead honest, yeah. and, he, and he's, he's done more to help people. Uh, he helps anyone he can, but uh, it's not... I, I don't think anyone's picking a bone with John Mueller. I mean, I'm, I certainly, I'm certainly not. I know I've asked a lot of questions of him, but it's, it's, there's nothing personal in there. He's just the, he's the figurehead. Because uh, we know that other people just do the recorded videos rather than do any sort of hangouts. But uh, yeah, there's something really wrong with Penguin. I'm, I'm pretty sure of it at this stage. Could, you know, there could be a possibility. I, I, I second that. Um, I just wanted to jump in there. Uh, I've made a study of John Mueller uh, since 2010, and I've never ever found him to lie. Um, um, just, you know. Matt Cutts, so I think he just lies for a living. Um, Matt Cutts doesn't lie. Don't Google it. Don't bother to be clever yeah. about it. I, I think we're, I, I think we're getting, you know, we're on to Penguin because I, you know, because we originally started with the question of the domain, you know, and now we're on to Penguin because that's what really the problem really is. It's not the domain that's the problem. It necessarily it's correcting because you're going to get damaged by penguin and there's no way out it's a black hole and i i honestly i don't think that they realized even though they probably tested this a lot one and and had the data i really don't believe that they realized this the, the impact this was going to have or maybe they did and they said hey look we're done playing around with this, and if you go back in time, it wasn't that long after Larry Page came up, came back as the CEO that this happened. It wasn't; it was a relatively short period of time. Um, and you're you're right; it was a t April twenty fourth last year that this happened. So you know, you go back a few years. You know, when you write an algorithm change as big as Panda and Penguin, it takes more than a couple of days to do. And it takes more than a few days to test. So the, those those changes were happening, in some cases, probably years before they actually rolled out. Um, so for me, I'm looking at it and saying, if you're going to cause a situation where there's no way for anybody to get out, you've got you've got an issue there that you need to fix. And it, and it could be, a, it's not going to be, but it could be a public relations issue. That's just that's just my opinion. They, they have they had no way to test what the response was going to be from webmasters, so they had no way really to test what was really going to happen in terms of letting sites out. I think. Well, I, I can tell you this. I, I, I mean, for for me, from my perspective, uh, personally, uh, it's Penguin has helped my business uh, tremendously. Um, I I get the price that I asked for. And I don't get a whole lot of arguments. So as far as my consulting business, it's it's really helped me out. Um, I really wouldn't have expected that. So from 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 my personal standpoint, I think that it, you know, I'm I'm cool with it. I think it did clean up a lot of the problems we had in the search, but I also think it caused other issues that we weren't aware of. And you know, I I, I hope they fix it. I don't know. They're not going to admit that it was wrong. They're not going to roll it back. They're going to try to fix it algorithmically in another update, I'm sure. So, I mean, I, I think we're just going to have to live with it for now. And, and my only point to the whole domain thing was just because you can doesn't mean you should. Just because you can put a penalty on a domain for, for the life of that domain doesn't mean that you should. And if you are going to do it, that's fine. If you're going to put a penalty on a, on a domain, go for it, but give somebody a way to get out of it. And if you don't give, if you put a penalty on something, don't tell them it's penalized and don't give somebody a way out of it. I think you're stacking the deck against people. 
and you're you're forcing you're looking at it from the standpoint of I'm going to fix these domainers. Just like you, just like they kind of looked at it like I'm going to fix the spam. Or, or you know, I'm going to create an algorithm that's going to co correct spam and and call it Penguin and had an issue with websites that got hit that really didn't deserve to get hit. And then you have this uh, this issue with the domains. I'll fix the domainer problem. I'll fix these these trash domains, we'll get those out of our index permanently. Although they don't say permanently, but that's really what they're talking about. If you make that the, that policy, it's protecting Google and not doing anything other than protecting Google, which is they're, they're going to protect their shareholders and they're going to protect their visitors. And so from their perspective, they've done what they needed to do. But, from, but just because they did that, does it mean that they shouldn't take one more step further and fix some other issues? Yeah, well, um, I, I've got another take on it. I, I, I really think that Google is being a bad uh, internet citizen um, in, in, in you know, seeking to have different uh, values assigned to a domain. And um, you know, I mean, they're, 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 I mean they're, 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 the issue for me is that, that uh, all domains um, should be uh, equal. Um, all all domains should be fair. And um, the um, per, the person in the street should be able to come in and um, buy a domain in good faith and and, and know that that domain um, is the same as any other. Um, Google is failing the test of fairness in this. Um, and if, if you think back to, to when Google came out, um, when when Google came along, AOL was the big cheese then, and, and Alta Vista and Yahoo. And uh, if 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 the rules that uh, Google is trying to introduce now existed back then, I mean Larry Page and Sergey Brin would still be paying off the mortgages. Um, the, 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 the Google would not, not have would not have um, become what it is today, um, except that back then we had a free and fair internet, and, and AOL would have loved to have squashed them and used their own protocols, and, and Time Warner, for argument's sake, would love to have, have, have um, um, rubbed them out and, and, and had all, all the business. But the, the, Google came in um, in a free and a fair and equitable internet, and um, that's as it should be. They, they prospered, um, but now, now that they've prospered, now, now that there is a Google monopoly, they want to change the rules. Well, I think it's wrong, and uh, Sash, you're wrong too. Um, anyway, that's my my view. We Sorry, still on? Yep. Yeah, let's move on. But we've given that a good nudge. <laughs>